Hi, this is Josh Marshall from TPM Media. It's Thursday, April the 12th, 2007. As we've been reporting on the U.S. attorney purge story going back weeks and even months now, we've been seeing more and more smoke out of the state of Wisconsin. Now, there was some big legal news out of the state just a few days ago when a key case was overturned. The U.S. attorney in Wisconsin, Stephen Biskupich, had brought a public corruption case against a bureaucrat in a Democratic administration. The governor of the state is currently a Democrat. When it went up for appeal, the appellate court reversed the decision and sent it back for a directed acquittal. They thought the case was so weak, they didn't just send it back for a new trial. They said that she should automatically be acquitted. Now, when we saw this, we wondered, was Biskupich under some kind of pressure to bring this case? And when we looked closer, we realized that Stephen Biskupich's record going back over the last three years is very similar to that of David Iglesias, the fired U.S. attorney in New Mexico. In the 2004 election, there were tons of Republican charges that Milwaukee had become a hotbed of voter fraud. This U.S. attorney, Stephen Biskupich, set up a joint election fraud task force to look into evidence of voter fraud. Uh, in the middle of 2005, in August 2005, the director of the state Republican Party, Rick Wiley, sent him a letter detailing all sorts of, a number of cases of alleged voter fraud that Biskupich needed to uh, prosec investigate and prosecute. Biskupich wrote back a couple weeks later saying, actually, there's no evidence for any of these cases. Okay, so we know that Republican officials in the state of Wisconsin were unhappy with the U.S. Attorney Stephen Biskupich because he wasn't cracking down on what seems to have been bogus charges of voter fraud. We know that Wisconsin state Republicans brought those allegations, those complaints to the White House and President Bush and Karl Rove brought those complaints on to Alberto Gonzalez. In Kyle Sampson's testimony before the Senate, Rove's complaints to Alberto Gonzalez actually come up. I do remember learning, I believe from the Attorney General, that he had received a complaint from Karl Rove about U.S. attorneys in three jurisdictions, including New Mexico, and the substance of the complaint was that those U.S. attorneys weren't um, pursuing voter fraud cases aggressively enough. Now, the question is, did those complaints, did anything happen? Did they have any effect? Did they lead to any effort to get Biskupich fired? Well, it seems like they might have. Our reporter, Paul Keel, has dug up some evidence that points strongly in that direction. Now we know that David Iglesias' name didn't show up on the list of U.S. attorneys to be fired until pretty late in the process. And in Kyle Sampson's testimony, he said, in fact, that on or after October the 17th, four names were added to the list of attorneys to be fired. One of those was David Iglesias. October 17th was the day that the White House sent over to Kyle Sampson one that dossier that the Wisconsin Republicans had sent to Karl Rove and an article about voter fraud in Wisconsin that Karl Rove had printed out on his computer. Those both go over to Kyle Sampson on October 17th, the same date apparently that Sampson said was the date after which four new U.S. attorneys got added to the list. Now, we know, you, we know that of those four, David Iglesias was one of them. The other three are redacted on the Department of Justice document dump uh, documents, so we don't know who those other three U.S. attorneys were. Now, the evidence is admittedly circumstantial, but we think there's a very strong case to be made that Stephen Biskupich one, must be one of those other three names that temporarily ended up on the firing list at the end of 2006. Now, David Iglesias got fired, Stephen Biskupich didn't. What happened? Why did his name get added if it did and then pulled off the firings list? Did it have something to do with his very aggressive prosecution of, the, of a Democratic administration in Wisconsin, a prosecution that turns out in retrospect to be baseless? That's the question we are asking. Okay, we're going to take a quick break now, and when we come back, we'll give you an update on the, our latest reporting on Stephen Biskupich and the U.S. Attorney Purge. Okay, we're back. Uh, there's a lot of 
current reporting still going on about the Wisconsin angle in the U.S. attorney purge. Uh, Daniel Bice from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel is doing a lot of reporting on this. We've been following his reporting. So check it out online at the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. At TPM, Paul Keel is following up with Senator Schumer. If you go back to Kyle Sampson's testimony, he says at one point that he thinks he remembers who these other three U.S. attorneys are, the ones whose names were redacted in the uh, emails in the document dump. He told, he told Senator Schumer, he wasn't quite sure, but he told, him, told Senator Schumer he'd, he'd get back to him once he was able to verify his memory and tell Schumer who those three U.S. attorneys are. Now, Paul Keel's got a call into Senator Schumer's office. We're going to try to find out, did Kyle Sampson ever get back to Senator Schumer? Does Senator Schumer now know for certain who those other three U.S. attorneys were who almost got fired? We're waiting to hear back. We'll tell you when we hear more. This is Josh Marshall from TPM Media, and we'll talk to you again next week.